Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Emily's Electric Oddities. And today we're in my workshop uh, because I have some big news to share, uh, literally big news. So let's go have a look at what I've got. So if you follow me on Twitter, you've seen me tweeting about this. This is my new drill press. I got this from the machine shop at work. It's a Delta, and I think they said it's a 1956. And they got new Deltas, uh, but they needed to get rid of these. And since I'm down there all the time, they asked if I wanted one, and of course I said yes. So yeah, I just love this freaking drill press. Mm. But there is a small problem. This drill press needs 220 three-phase power to run. I don't have 223 phase here at my apartment. I rent, so that's not an option to add it. What are we gonna do? Fortunately, there's a solution to this. It's a variable frequency drive. They can take single phase power and convert it to three phase power. And that's exactly what I need to run this. So I have a VFD and we're gonna see if we can get that thing working. I've never played with one of these before. So I don't know what I'm doing, but we're gonna figure it out. Chinese. I don't read Chinese. Let's see what it says. Input. Single phase. 100 to 120. 50 to 60 hertz. Perfect. This one looks promising. Thick means good, right? All I'm doing right now is I want to see if I can get this thing to turn on. Keep your fingers crossed out there for me. All right, it's on. Yes. So I didn't film it last night, but I came out here and I took this big switch out. It's really well built in it and it's got a nice aesthetic as well. It's got these big buttons here. So I think I can make this work. First thing, we need to take this box off. Okay, so I think the plan is that I'm going to mount this to the left of this. And to do that, I need to make a plate that I can attach to this that I can also attach this to. All right, how about a piece of Lexan? I have a bunch of this Lexan that I bought. I got a huge sheet of it for like two bucks. Okay, this is the third and hopefully final day of working on this drill press. Let's see if I can get it finished up. All right, I think I know what I'm doing now. I bought some connectors at the hardware store. They're these, I don't know, they're like watertight connectors. I got them because they grip onto cords nicely. So I'm gonna use this as a strain relief for all the wires that need to come in and out of this switch box here. So I'm gonna put this one here. And this is gonna be where our power comes in. I have another one up here. This is power out from the switch, and then it runs over here to the VFD. 
And then down here I have another one. So I'm gonna use it to power this light right here. I'm gonna take this plug off the end of the cord and I'll just run that straight in through there. I need to wire the output to the VFD. So let's do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring power in from the wall and I'm gonna connect that power to these terminals right here. Or actually I can connect them right here because this is all connected as a block. I'll have hot and neutral come in here, go up through here to here. And then when I press start, it'll connect power from here to here and it'll travel through this wire and turn the VFD on. I think right now, I want to just see if the VFD gets power when I flip the start switch on. All right, first moment of truth. Let's press the start button and see what happens. Okay, cool. Uh, that's a good first step. Now I just need to wire the output of the VFD, which is under here, to these guys right here, and then wire this light into the uh, hot and neutral down here. And I think I'm done. So yeah, let's do that. All right, I think my soldering iron is heated up enough. You probably can't see it on camera very well, but there's a lot of like weird green ooze coming out of this wire as it heats up. And I'm not sure what that's all about, to be honest. All right, so I have a spare knockout here that was left over from where the motor wires came in. So I'm gonna use that spare knockout to put the wires for this light through. So if I did all that right, this light should have power as soon as I plug this whole thing in. But it doesn't wanna work. Why not? Oh, because this light bulb is loose. Aha! It works. Okay, so we have the power to the VFD. We have the power to the light. So now we just need to give power from the VFD to the drill press. I am cobbling together some parts. Oh, where are you? I'm cobbling together some parts from the conduit section at the hardware store to make a shitty strain relief. This is called a wire clamp and I took half of it off. And I'm using it because it has two holes here that have bolts that go through. So then I can use this thing to mount this thing to this Lexan plate so that this thing isn't flopping around. I need to drill a pair of holes so that this thing will stick to the Lexan. So. All right, so that fits, cool. So now I just need to find a pair of nuts to go on the back of those. You don't need to watch me do that because that's super boring. Okay, my jury rig strain relief is on here and it's pretty secure. So now all I need to do is put my 220 wires into the screw terminals at the bottom of the VFD. Okay, let's test this bad boy. So it took me forever and a day to figure out all the settings on this stupid thing. And I got it working, but then the torque was kind of really bad at low speeds. So I had to go into the settings again. And I'm telling you these setting menus on this thing are the worst, like super unintuitive, like really tricky to program the right way. But in any case, I got it working. And what I had to do was, all right, it's mariachi time. What I had to do to fix the torque issue at low RPMs was to put the belt on here so that the motor would be running at higher RPMs and that the spindle would be running at lower RPMs. So spinning faster here, slower here, gives more torque on this end. And then I can make the spindle go faster by increasing the RPMs of the motor. And so what I'm having to do is like overdrive the motor a bit, but that's where the VFD comes in. You can set it to go faster than like the 60 hertz speed it would be running at. I'm taking it up to 90 hertz and it runs pretty well. So check it out. We'll press run and we'll turn it up. 
So this is like 25 RPMs and it's still pretty torquey. Before I change these settings, I could stop the motor from spinning by just grabbing this and that's no good. But we can go up, 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 up and up. All the way up to 90. And so this is turning pretty nice and quick. So I think I've got a pretty good balance here between torque and RPMs. So I think we're good to go. All right, let's see what kind of RPMs we get out of this thing. This is uh, 24 Hertz and it's saying that's 220 RPMs. All right, that's 48 Hertz. And that is 443 RPMs. All right, so we're at 60 Hertz. This is what it would be running at if it was on mains power. And that's 550 RPMs. Let's go all the way up to 90, shall we? Okay, that's uh, 819 RPMs. All right, we have a range. <sighs> Man, I'm hungry. I should make something for dinner. Hmm. That sounds good. Monterey Jack, wait a second. Thank you. 